What is going on, guys? I am Sep Tom Sierra George, the coach of your San Francisco Arkham Niners, here to bring you my GBA Season 6 Finals match against Cooper or the Utah Jasmine. Now, we of course did make it to the finals last season of the GBA where we unfortunately lost to Dan or A Drive. And now, guys, we are. We're here, and it's. Before I get into it, I just want to say thank you guys for the immense support I've gotten over this season of the GBA. I would not have gotten to where I am without you guys, and just really, you guys are the best and the greatest, but enough of that stuff. If you want to check out Cooper, his link is in the description below, and if you want to check out how I did in fact prep for this battle, that link is in the description below as well. So, let me get right on into the game, because let's be real, that's why you guys are in fact here. So, Cooper decides to bring the Weezing, the Empoleon, the Star Raptor, the Gallade, the Clefable, and the Sablite. Immediately looking at his team, I'm seeing, okay, no Greninja, no Agron, and no either Gliscor or Claydol. So immediately I'm thinking, I can freely bolt turn around this guy's team with Electabuzz. Toxic and Magnet, of course Magnetize is not going to be used at all in this game because he doesn't have a ground type to spam ground type moves against my Electabuzz. So I am in fact going to lead off with Electabuzz. However, before I get into it, I just want to too quickly say me and Cooper had to actually replay this game about 20 times just to get everything right because we did DC because I am on college Wi-Fi and if you've been to college and you've used the Wi-Fi you understand that it disconnects randomly every like half an hour and we were like literally like five turns left in the game and it DC'd so we had to replay it about 20 times to get this right and uh, yeah but without further ado Let's get right on into this. So, I do decide right here that I am, in fact, going to lead off with my Electabuzz just because I can freely Voltwist around his team. His fastest thing on his team is, in fact, the Mega Gallade. However, Mega Gallade is not able to outspeed Electabuzz before it, it Mega Evolves. So, he, in fact, leads off with his Sablite turn one, and I lead off with my Electabuzz. So, immediately I'm like, you know what? Let's not Volt Switch. Let's just go for a Toxic. Now, he decides to go for the burn right here. Going for the will o -Wisp, trying to get that nice little burn damage off on me. As I do decide to go for the Toxic right here. So, Toxic is going to wear down the Sabli a lot. It's a very annoying Pokemon to deal with because of that Prankster ability with the Recover and the fact that it just burns every single Pokemon. And right here, I figure, you know what? Let's just go for a, a Volt Switch on this one. He actually decides to go for a Taunt. Maybe he thought I'd be a Protect set, a Substitute set. Not really too sure, but... I do go for the Volt Switch, and I calc it after this, and this is, is in fact a predominantly specially defensive Sabli. So, right here, I was looking at the team, I'm like, I can go into Gardevoir, and I know for a fact that he's not going to stand against my Gardevoir, so I'm going to put a lot of pressure on his team right here. As he does, they t t take the nice toxic damage, put him at about 50% health, so I feel like I did actually get the better end of that exchange right there with Electables and Sabli. He decides to switch out into his employee right here as I set up the future site. So now, in a couple turns, the future site will strike and I'll pretty much be able to pick up a KO on anything I want because of that. Now, in the first battle we did, I went for Teebled as he went for Scald and I actually got the full, par well not the full, I got the Paralysis, which means I was able to take him out with a second Teebled right here without him going for the Scald again. So to prevent any potential hacks with the burn, and the fact that he only got one Scald instead of two, he decides to go for two Aqua Jets just to make that fair right there. So we get as even amount of damage as possible. But he goes into Clefable right here. And I just thought, you know what? Clefable can't really touch my Assault Vest Gardevoir, even if he's an offensive spread. I'm going to go for Psy Shock. And Psy Shock is actually a two-hit KO, depending on the rolls. In the first battle, I did in fact get the rolls to two-hit KO the Clefable, which is why he does go for Stealth Rocks twice here. It was not a mislick on his part, guys. But I am able to kill him off with a side shock here. He actually lived on one HP on this last one, so it's pretty amusing, honestly. But Gardevoir putting in that early work nice and early on. I like to see the Empoleon and the Clefable are down. Now, right here, guys, I'm actually going to pause the video, and I'm going to talk about the horrible horrible play I made right here for all he has left on his team is the Staraptor, the Gallade, the Weezing, and the Sabli. And I predicted him to want to U-turn out right here because I do have my Fortress on my team. And I didn't think he would want to go for Brave Bird just because I could have gone into Electabuzz as well. And if he did go for Brave Bird, I was perfectly fine with sacking off my Gardevoir at that point for it actually just did phenomenal work. 
and I was really willing to just let him take that recoil damage he would have taken from the Brave Bird to take out my Gardevoir, but he actually decides to U-turn out, as I predicted, and immediately when I saw the Staraptor come out, I clicked T-Bolt, and that was the worst play I could have made. For if I had clicked Moonblast right here, anything that came in on the U-turn would have had to take a Moonblast, and then a Psy Shock after. For if the Weezing came out, it would have taken about 40%, 35%, just depending on the spread from my Moonblast, and then I could have o code with with the Psy Shock. And you guys will see right here that he actually ends up going out into his Gallade. And if I had clicked Moonblast, when I, as soon as I clicked T-Bolt, I'm like, well, I wish I was on Showdown so I could click Cancel. But I can't do that. I click T-Bolt, and right here I'm thinking, my Gardevoir is not at a good enough amount of health. I definitely cannot take... Um, any hits from anything. I'm just gonna stay in. Maybe he'll overpredict and go for Swords Dance. Not gonna happen, obviously. He's just gonna go for Zen Head, but... And take out my Gallade. So, oh, my, my, my Gardevoir. So if I click Moonblast, we would have been up 6-3, to three, and it pretty much would have been the game right there. But I clicked T-Bolt, I rushed my play, and it was a mistake on my part. But I go into my Fortress right here, which is my dedicated counter to the Gallade. Now right here, I was pretty confident he would switch, but if he had started going for Bulk Ups, or decide to set up a sword stance. I really needed that crucial gy gy gyro ball damage right there. And he actually goes out into his Sablai. So, right here, I figured he would actually go for the taunt, expecting me to go for my stealth rocks, which is why I clicked the Volt Switch right here. I actually wanted to, to get up my rocks, but I figured the taunt was going to be his play. Hindsight probably should have just gone for rocks right there, but it's fine. I'm going to get him, uh, my rocks in the future. I go out into Electabuzz right here and. He does get hit by his toxic damage, and that puts him at about 50% of health. And right here, I do not have an attacking move other than HP Ice and Volt Switch, so I am just going to fire off the Volt Switch. As he actually goes for the Recover right here, really showing me that he wants to keep the Sabli alive. Um, he feels that he needs it around for a very interesting reason you guys will see in the battle. And I do get off that Volt Switch, just getting off a nice little 40% of damage. However, the Toxic is racking up, so I go into Fortress right here. And I'm able to take that rocks. Now, if he decides to go for the taunt right here, this Sablai is going to be heavily crippled by Toxic. So I really think he's just going to go for a recover or switch out. And I do get the, the prediction right there. And I do go for my stealth rocks as he does go into his Gallade. So I get off my rocks right here. And then I'm just going to rinse and repeat what I did last time. So right here, I do go for Gyro Ball again. I didn't want to over predict. Didn't want to do anything too rash right there. It's going to go for Gyro Ball. The, if the Sabai wants to come in again, he, he's going to take the Rocks, take the Gyro Ball, and the Toxic Damage, toxic damage which is going to put him insanely low. Now right here, I didn't want him to get off a last minute Will-O-Wisp against me. Really didn't want to have that happen to my Fortress, considering that I want to hit the Gyro Ball against the Galilee to get maximum amount of damage on it. Um, and I do switch out into Electabuzz right here, expecting the Will-O-Wisp. He actually decides to recover, so he really wants to keep the Sabai alive for some strange reason but right here he is going to hit by toxic and then he is going to in fact recover up again knowing that i'm probably just going to volt switch so he's just going to try to get as much health back as possible so that he can see what i want to go into he does he does go for the recover gonna get pretty much back up to full and i'm gonna fire off that volt switch now the toxic damage is racking up but at this point i'm thinking I need to go into Infernape. I'm not getting anywhere with my Fortress coming out again. So I'm going to go out into Infernape right here. Because I do have the Fire Blast. And from half, I am able to Oko pretty much any 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 variant of Sablite. Even if it's max specially defensive. He does in fact go for the trick though right here. As he reveals to be a Lagging Tail variant. So this was actually really cool on his part. I really give him props for that. Because this heavily cripples my Infernape. I am not able to outspeed anything on his team anymore, but I did count the damage from the Staraptor. It is, in fact, a Choice Scarf set, and the Gallade does outspeed me anyway. Now, right here, I was looking at the amount of health he had, and I decided to sack off my Infernape and go for the Vacuum Wave. Now, the reason I went for Vacuum Wave right here is because right at that amount of damage, at minus one, a Scald from a mm, no investment Manaphy is actually able to possibly take out the Gallade right there. So... It would probably be like a 50-50 chance, but if he wanted to get any damage off on my Manaphy, he would have to go for close combat, which would put him in range of my Scald. So, I do go for the Scald right here, not going to overpredict or anything like that, as he decides to switch out into his Weezing. Now, right here is where we actually de-seed, right after this Scald, 
And I got the burn probably three times when we were trying to recreate the game. I do not get the burn right here. And I looked at Weezing's possible moves about 20 times going into this turn. And I realized his only thing he could do to me is either Pain Split, Explosion, T-Bolt, or Clear Smog. And I didn't think he would go for Clear Smog. I didn't think he'd want to burn me or anything. So I set up the Tail Globe. He does go for the T-Bolt, but I am a max HP, max defensive man. Obviously, the defense does not matter. But the max HP allows me to take that hit, and then I am able to Oko the Weezing right up here with the Scald, right as soon as he gets his Black Slice. So I do Oko the Weezing with the Scald here as Manaphy is able to take that thing out. And now all he has left is the Star Raptor and the Mega Gallade. And the Mega Gallade is, in fact, going to be his choice right here. For he actually decided to run the Leaf Blade on his Mega Gallade, as you see him come out right now. We are able to, of course, take him off from that range, but he does have the Leaf Blade, which means he does have the high critical hit chance. Is he going to get the crit? No, he is not. And we actually had a chance to even survive the crit from that range just because of the max defensive investment. And we are able to take the Gallade out with the Scald. So, Manaphy putting in the work that it properly always does because Manaphy is just an animal in the format and it just is unbelievable and I will probably be franchising it for next season depending on what we do with with Sun and Moon. But he's going to go out into Staraptor. This is in fact a choice Scarf Staraptor as we found out by the damage on my Gardevoir when you turned out. He is able to take out my Manaphy right here which I do just sack it off because I'm not really going to keep it around for anything. And right here, I go out into my fortress. Now, if he crit my f my fortress right here, it was actually game for him. I don't believe he would have taken enough recoil to be able to take to take himself out. But you guys see, I'm able to survive the brave bird with my fortress, go for the gyro ball, and we are able to defeat Cooper, the Utah Jasmine, in the finals of GBA season six, and become the season six champions guys so yep i don't even believe it i after this battle i was just in shock it's an adrenaline rush after i won this game i was extremely happy extremely confused and i was just like holy shit i actually won the gba i don't know how i did it but honestly the trades I made in the mid-season probably influenced it the most. Me getting Manaphy, Mamoswine, and Electabuzz helped my team so much going into the playoffs as we were able to dominate the playoffs, getting a 5-0, a 4-0, and a 3-0 in the playoffs. And just, I don't, I don't know, guys. I don't even know what to say about the fact that we just somehow pulled this out of our asses and just won the GBA. Um, I want to give a huge thank you to really all of my subscribers, all of the fans of the Arkham Niners, to the entire Arkham Niners nation, guys. You guys really made this GBA season what it was, and I really would not have made it this far without your constant support. I want to give a big thank you to the people who helped me test for the playoffs, especially because I did have M Moxie Infernape. He built teams for me for the opposite opponents so like for example he built a team for mv squad and i got to face him and practice against mv squad the same with nick squad didn't happen for this one because we didn't have much time for that but also big thank you to shoddy mono who did actually bounce some ideas off with me um huge thanks to everyone who's recorded for me over the season i do not have a capture card guys which is why i don't do live narrations all of my narrations are post comps i would love to do the lives i would have loved to record this live but of course, I do not have the capabilities or the software to do that. So huge thank you to everyone who's recorded for me. You know who you are. And big thank you to everyone who's gen for me as well this whole season, guys. It's been a hell of a season. And we have somehow come out on top in the most competitive GBA season yet. And it's only going to get better from here, guys. We are, of course, returning for GBA Season 7. I am not going to be leaving the GBA on a high note. I'm going to be going for back-to-back -back championships, of course. For we could have had back-to-back -back championships this season, but A-Drive decided to rudely take that away from us. But we decided to repeat GBA history where the runner-up in the previous season wins the next season. So, yeah guys, that is going to wrap it up for GBA Season 6 on our channel. I might do a 
um, season recap video. I do not know yet, but I do plan on doing that eventually. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, guys, so the Arcaniners, the San Francisco Arcaniners, are GBA Season 6 champs. And, guys, I want to give a big thank you. I'd give you all a hug if I could, but I can't because I'm through the computer and that's really creepy, actually. So, guys, I am Septile MC or George, the coach of your San Francisco Arcaniners, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.